In this lecture, we're going to go over the U.S. role under the administrations of Theodore Roosevelt and William Howard Taft. And this really, this story starts with this desire to find a shortcut to Asia. If you were involved in exports in 1890s or 1900 even, and you wanted to get your goods from the east coast of the United States to the Asian market, for example, China, you were going to have to travel a very long way to make this happen. You're going on a long journey around South America, what up to the polar bears, pick up some peeps in Peru, get some gas in Hawaii, and find yourself on a very long journey, eventually, apparently crashing into Southeast Asia and India. And for a very long time, people had dreamt of a shorter route. And that's where you have this desire to build a canal. Forget trade, for example. What if it was military reasons? What if there was some sort of desire to defend your territory, whether it be Hawaii or the west coast of the United States? You need to get battleships quickly from one spot to another. It would be great if you could find a way to go through a canal. That's where Panama comes into play. Panama is a beautiful, interesting country. Here's the highlights. They have beautiful rainforests with quetzal birds. They have beaches with coconuts you could just drink from the tree or from the ground. Beach huts where you could stay inside with your mosquito net and you have beautiful islands all to yourself where you can run around butt naked and playing like, you know, Jacques Cousteau, Tom Sawyer type stuff. Kids who battle each other with their feet. And mannequins? Moving on. All within reach with a cheap bus ride from anywhere in Central America. Now here's the story. If you can somehow imagine going from New York to San Francisco is going to take 13,000 miles back then. That is a waste of time and money. And so if you could find a way to build a canal right here in the central part of America, you can reduce that to 5,200 miles. And so this canal was envisioned by many different people, and it started with the French. And so you want to build this man-made waterway, going through the continent in these areas, digging up the land, and filling it with water, and being able to take this shortcut. And Panama is the area where people dreamt of this dream becoming a reality. Because this area right here, if you take out the lake, 40 miles of land linking North and South America. This would eliminate the need of traveling around South America. Now here's the thing, canals. You know, you gotta dig, you know, you gotta put these locks in place, you fill them with water, the ship goes in, the doors shut, these giant concrete doors, the water is pumped in, and as the water's pumped in, in about 15 minutes it rises up, these little machines tow the boat, making sure it doesn't crash into the side of the concrete wall. And this is how the canal works. And the locks allow the boats to go up in elevation or down in elevation. So the Panama Canal had to be built. And who was going to build it? So there's the process. There's the ship. 24 hours. You could take a look. Go on YouTube. Type in Panama Canal 24-hour video. And this thing still is operational today. Now, how was it created? Well, allow me to tell you. Panama Canal. What's up, students? You're going to learn about the Panama Canal today. So I paid $600 to get here. So you can see it. There it is. I have my $2 Panama Coke. And uh, I probably have yellow fever. So study for your tests. And I'm sweaty, pasty, white. Got a tramp steamer, my ship's called Hal. Forty miles of the Panama Canal. Got a cargo of sodas, they are locale. Forty miles of the Panama Canal. Sailing across the Caribbean Sea to the Pacific in a jiffy through Panama, but not on land. The French are the first ones to attempt it. In fact, in 1879, a French company gets the rights to try to build this canal. They get permission from Colombia. Um, Colombia actually controlled Panama, and Colombia gives 
French, a French company, uh, authority to build this canal. Now, what happens is things don't go well. They start building, they put a railroad in. The railroad's important so you can move workers and, and sediment and other things, supplies, heavy equipment into the area. But they start building, but there's a lot of mismanagement. They underestimated how difficult this project was going to be. Um, they, they thought it would cost one amount. It cost it way more. Um, this is a very different thing than building the canal that was in, for example, Egypt, the Suez Canal, where you're you know, digging through sand. This is jungle. It rains a lot. It's very humid. And you got these little guys, mosquitoes. Thing about these mosquitoes, which people didn't know, was when they bite you, they are spreading diseases such as yellow fever and malaria. And after a number of years of trying to build this thing, $400 million later, the French company goes bankrupt. And basically what happens is this guy was kind of one of the early figures. If you go to Panama, his face is everywhere. Um, from Nando Maria Visconde de Lesseps. So he's one of the pioneers of this, this vision. They did a lot of work, a lot of excavating, a lot of you know digging away of the, the sediments and building of the canal, but it doesn't get completed. Well, in 1901, the United States has a new president. William McKinley is assassinated by a crazy anarchist, and now Theodore Roosevelt becomes president. And he has this dream that he wants to make this thing a reality. But here's the deal. In 1901, Colombia stills controls Panama. So he makes Colombia an offer. Let's make him an offer you can't refuse. And Colombia rejects the treaty, the hay Haran Treaty, H-A-Y-H-E-R-R-A-N. Colombia rejects the treaty. They say, no, we don't want to sell this canal zone to the United States. And so, be gone. We're not selling it to you. Now, Roosevelt, of course, dreams are dashed. What is he going to do? He has a couple of options. He could cry. He could find a new place to build a canal. Remember, Nicaragua was an option, but there's a lot of volcanic activity there, so there were some questions about whether or not it would work. Go to war with Colombia. Eh, that could get sticky, you know, look like a big bully defeating a smaller country. Offer Colombia more money. You know, that's always a possibility, but then again, you get into this, you know, situation where, you know, when does it stop? Or none of the above. Now, if you're at home and you're thinking, cry, you're wrong. There's a story, a true story, where Theodore Roosevelt was giving a speech. He was shot. He got hit by bullets, stood back up, finished the speech before getting medical attention. Crying is not an option. What Roosevelt does Reminds me of my favorite line by a rapper I don't like. Real G's move in silence like lasagna. Some of you are confused. Roosevelt decides, hey, why don't I hook up with some of these French company officials? They want to get rid of this project. They want to get their money back. And what they end up doing, some members of the French company and some people of Panama say, hey, why don't we declare independence? Why don't we declare independence? And when I say we, Panama declares its independence, Roosevelt promises to support them. In fact, a lot of the planning for the independence, the writing of the Declaration of Independence, the Constitution, the flag that's produced, is done in the United States in a hotel room in New York. In 1903, in November of 1903, Panama declares independence. And to make sure that this thing is successful, back to that quote, real G's move in silence like lasagna, Roosevelt sends a couple of U.S. ships right off the coast of Panama, kind of as a warning, don't mess with the Panama independence movement. Roosevelt sends these warships to make sure the Panamanian revolution is successful. He historically claims, I took the canal zone while everyone else was talking. He just does it. And this is part of his philosophy. He was a, a firm believer of this old African proverb, speak softly and carry a big stick, which is basically the little Wayne Real G's move in silence saying, you know, don't talk a lot about it, just do it. 
his big stick policy. See Roosevelt there with his big stick sailing into Panama. What happens is shortly after Panama gets its independence from Colombia, which is right here, one of the reasons why Colombia is not able to really stop this independence is there's a very, very intense jungle right here between these two countries, so it's not easy to send sh troops. Also, the U.S. Navy's waiting there. Colombia gives up Panama, and Panama signs a treaty giving the United States the right to build the Panama Canal. U.S. construction begins in 1906. Um, takes a long time. It's not done until Roosevelt's already out of office in 1914, and a lot of people died trying to build this canal. Over 22,000 French workers, over 5,000 American workers, and many other people from other parts of the country who were brought in to do the bulk of the labor. Um, one of the reasons why the Americans were so much more successful at not losing people is because a doctor, Dr. Walter Reed, goes in there and discovers that it's mosquitoes breeding in stagnant water which is causing a lot of the disease in the area and he begins this drainage project to try to reduce the amount of mosquito breeding which is causing a lot of disease. Um, the canal is finally built and it took a lot of hard work. Random side story. Talk about hard work. These little ants, these leaf cutter ants in Panama when I was walking around, these little buggers Man, they, they're just running. Look at that. They're all just going through the jungle, collecting leaf, sending it down underground into their little tunnel where they turn it into fungus or mold and they actually eat the mold, not the leaf. Cool stuff. Roosevelt's so excited about this idea of this canal. He becomes the first president ever while serving as president to leave the United States he goes to Panama wearing a white suit at a construction site, probably not the br brightest idea, to go witness the building of the Panama Canal. One of the early photos of a ship coming through it, a warship, and it's going to take a lot of work. Different locks, there's one, two, three, four, five, all those different locks. Panama Canal, there it is. The ships coming through, these massive ships, these are the kind of the mules, the mechanical mules that help tow the ships through the canal to make sure they don't you know bang into the concrete walls little tugboat once again not really to, to to pull the boats but to help steer them so they don't crash into the canal sides submarines aboard just in case there's a problem a lot of wildlife near the canal you know different types of wildlife um, and like I said ships from all over the world this one from Germany they're constantly doing jobs to the canal to make sure that it is functional. So digging out sediment from the bottom, these floating barges fill up this with soot and dirt and then drag it away. And here's some Panama porn, a little statue symbolizing the joining of these two oceans, the oceans Pacific and the Atlantic. And when you go to Panama and Panama City, you'll see just tons of ships waiting their turn to go through the canal.